but would probably agree that this is of greater importance in a long term sense than some of those issues. I think that's right. I also yeah. think, and as I said to the NBR um, journalist, I reckon if we don't uh, vote for change here and at least have the debate on the referendum the time after that, we will not get a genuine debate on electoral systems right. again in my lifetime. I so you think about... this is once one time only. That's okay. my view. So, so you would encourage pro-MMP people to vote against the MMP maybe so we can have a better debate? Well, if you take the sort of the academic view that a debate is good, yeah, yeah which I, I do, yeah, yeah, I would. I yeah, think it's good we're having because that's the only way you'll get the real yeah. debate. Because as you say, we haven't had it yet. We've got what a month and a bit left. Yeah. I don't think we're going to have it. Okay, we've got another question. I was just wondering why the national government didn't have the inquiry about MMP before the referendum. To me, that seems like a completely logical and really sensible mm. thing and to do. And the review? Yeah. The review, yeah, because yeah. a lot of the problems with MMP that people discuss, like the threshold and the Māori seats and things like that, are things that would come out of that review anyway. Yeah, I don't yeah very good question. Yeah. Yeah. Look, uh, my personal view, I emphasise that personal view, is that the review process raises more questions than it answers, right? I cannot see how you can... I mean, the review seems to me to be based on this view that you can tweak the system mm. Um, and, and prove it. Actually, all those tweaks, when you look at them, are fundamental changes for yeah. the minor parties. They change the system from MMP into some other sort of a system. Would that right? information not be useful before, in the, in the sense that the 87 Commission like, was quite radical, obviously, and said that, and then that kick-started the debate? Wouldn't it make sense for us to do that again? Well, arguably, but I suppose the point I'm trying to make to you is vote at this coming referendum on MMP warts and all the way it is now, not on some uh, review that may happen in the future um, versus the other systems. Okay, well, let, let's talk about these warts. Um, mm. So, is it sort of a pragmatic uh, problem you have with MMP? No, know? I think it's or, quite principled. Okay, what's. You know, so, so I, I do think a first issue that I would raise, and I suppose it's a common one, and look, if you've got Jordan Williams from the change mm. campaign on, he'd give you a number of other reasons, mm. right? So I give you some of my own idiosyncratic views. But one that I think all those who would say MMP should, should be changed would, would argue is the tail wagging the dog syndrome. And again, I make the point that, look, that is a difficult argument, I think, to make today okay. in today's context. But the idea of um, minor parties who have a disproportionate say um, and voters for those parties have a disproportionate vote, that will come again, in my view, because it's a flaw of the system. I mean, I think I'll just go on quickly. The other two that I think are actually more interesting mm. are some real flaws with the list process in that I do think if you look at it, and it, it amazes me, and I'm, I'm not trying to give you a kicking here, but that political scientists haven't thought more about this, but there are a deep-seated sort of issues about uh, these lists are decided by small groups of party people that is power out of the hands of voters, everyday voters, who frankly have no input into who our members of parliament are on that list. And then there's manipulation of lists. I mean, we saw it um, with Judith Tizard and two or three others. Sure. We're two or three in Labour, and I'm not trying to pick on Labour because you find other examples. Sure. Said, no, it's not going to be you. Even though that list was the list that they went to the election on, we want to go down to this person, Louisa Wall. So I think the lists actually academically and constitutionally mm. there are real issues there mm. and the third one I would say and it's kind of a bit like what we we're saying about political rhetoric earlier mm. are issues of the culture that MMP is brought in. I think mm. it's brought in this you know it's all about the party vote so it's all about the party brand I think that does mean you have less MPs who go down with a view from their constituents and are prepared to stand up for that and I personally think that's okay. a shame. So supplementary member that would answer some of these problems that would like any system, it, it, look, I'm not saying it's perfect, and you can say, well, it's still got a list, right? Yeah, so right. therefore, you. But 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 it's the point is, it's got less of one. So I think its tendencies are better. I do think it is, uh, you know, it's unkindly described as MMP and drag. But look, yeah. I think it is actually a hybrid that balances sort of macho majoritarian systems on the one side, which actually have some merits mm -hmm. in terms of accountabilities and so on and so forth, and a full-scale proportional system on the other. You can still bring in diversity. You can still bring in experts like Tim Grosser and Chris sure. Van Leeson and Michael Woodhouse. Okay, so is the SM... But he's winning his seat anyway, so... That's <laughs> very, very well handled. Um, now, the SM system is... Would you say it's the preference of most national MPs? I know there's no... No, I couldn't say that. I couldn't say, I mean, I think you... I, I can think of some MPs in national who would definitely say I mean, stick with MMP. I mean, right. John Key has pretty much put his cards on the table and said he prefers SM. Um, there must be I a lot of people. I don't think so. I mean, I'd, I'd say you, 
genuinely there hasn't been a sort of an in-depth discussion well, from us about, you know, well, this shouldn't, is... Shouldn't there have been? No, because I think it actually goes back to what sort of party national is. And it is a party where it's individuals who have choices. Um, there is no party line on this. We can state personal preferences. So I'm doing that. I have a personal view. OK, so what would happen? Let's just say that the referendum gets the, the no vote or the yes vote in favour of an, a, a second referendum mm. in 2014. Mm. And it was a, a choice between MMP and First Past the Post. Because I think that's mm. quite a... But I would vote for MMP. You would prefer that over yeah, first past the post. Yeah, I would. Okay. I mean, look, I just think, uh, I think in hindsight, people make arguments that it hasn't just been MMP that's made a more diverse. Your point about you know Parliament looking like us. Um, uh, uh, that, that if it hasn't just been MMP, but I think actually that's been a good thing. It has brought in diversity, it has brought in the, the ability to bring in, look, a first-class trade minister who's a trade nego <coughs> negotiator from way back, that sort of thing. Okay, sure. Now, I think we're running out of time, so just some final questions. Pretty much your chance to give us your insider picks for the election and maybe afterwards. Um, well, what's going to happen? Uh, let's start with some of the minor parties. Um, the Māori Party, what's going to happen? Uh, look, the, at least three seats, possibly four. So, look, look, they'll be back and I think they'll still be a real player. Yeah. And I mean, some people say they'll be decimated. I don't buy that at all. OK, and they'll be welcomed back into a coalition government with you that's, guys? That's, if we get there, that's for uh, the Prime Minister. OK, but in the past you've stated a preference for the Murray Party over, say, ACT, etc. Is that... Um, oh, I wouldn't say that necessarily. Look, I think actually what we've got there with ACT on one side and Maori on the other is a balance, right? I mean, it, it's actually been, look, let's be, let's be honest about it. It's been very good for a national government okay. to have that balance. OK, the Mana Party? Oh, well, Hone will be back. I don't, I, I haven't seen the current polling. Look, would they bring in one more? I can't see really any and more than that. Are they just a little blip on our sort of party system, or a, do you think that's a force that's going to be around for a while, or what's going to happen? Well, Hone may, may be around for a while, mm. yeah. I mean, I think he will continue to kind of win his seat. I, I personally don't see them having really much power, or dare I say it, mana, uh, in the parliament, <laughs> because, you know, I just can't okay. see, I mean, Labor's ruled them out as well. Okay. Act and Banks and Epson, what's going to happen Look, there? difficult to say. I think it depends where they poll. You know, and and, and, and and what I mean by that, I know that sounds a bit basic, but you know, there is a, there is something going on in Epsom right now. I would still say uh, on election day, John Banks will win uh, Epsom, and they will bring two or three with them. Okay, and they be... tend to do better actually on election day than they do in polling going up to it. And again, another good coalition partner after November twenty sixth. Yeah, that's right. Okay, and I, actually, that's a good question about. Um, uh, Don Brash, yeah. um, how will that go if he was a, a minister and um, with I, you? If you were, yeah. um, you know, do you think that would work? Look, personally, I know Don quite well. I get along with him. You know, um, I think he is to some extent. Um, uh, you know, he has he has floundered to some extent. I think in in, in the, the current environment, MMP. Um, but but as a person, I really like him. Um, I think John Key's um, sort of been reasonably clear that he's not necessarily going to have him yes. in the cabinet. OK, United Future, Peter Dunn, will he...? One. He'll get yep. his one. OK, the Green Party, are they, is this their year? Is this their final year time to hit 10% or you, not? You, you know, to some extent, yes, but I also think if you look at them over time, they have polled less on election day. Sure. They've done not as well on election the, day as, as in the lead-up. But the past isn't always a no, template for the future. No, um, no, it's not. But I but I also think, you know, and, and again, look, I hope every um, young person in Otago gets out and votes, even if that, you know, heaven forbid, they will be voting Greens. But I also <laughs> think if you Look at if you look at what's going on with the low um, registration with young people and so on. Obviously, something that typically favours the Greens to some extent. I just yeah. don't know if where they're polling now is going to be sure. what we see. Now, for the first time, they've displayed a willingness to consider a national party government. You know, um, some sort of supply and confidence deal, mm. etc. Mm. Do you think that's at all possible, or do you think that's just rhetoric? Yeah I, yeah, I do. I think it's very unlikely. Let, let, let's be clear, because economically we're, we're miles, we're kilometres away, yeah. right? 
But I think on green issues, actually, we could work together and we could. I mean, we've done it already, haven't we, yeah. when it comes to home insulation and so on and so forth. So as I said to you earlier, actually, when you're talking about um, uh, Kevin Haig, um, David Clendon, Kennedy Graham, look, I think they're people of integrity. I don't agree with them um, often. Um, I mock them sometimes in the house, right? But, uh, you know, I, I think we could work with them. OK, and the big question, Labor, are they going to grasp that a bit higher up or are they going to go into free fall do you think? Hmm. We'll say with very, our. very difficult. Look, I, I would say they have a, a base of around 28, 29, 30%. They're so not they're, going under that. Okay, interesting. National, can it stay above the 50%? It seems to be in the polls at the moment, do you think? What are the chances? Look, it's never, it's, I think it's happened once in Germany. It's obviously never yeah. happened here. I think, you know, we obviously want to go out and get every vote we can, um, but it, it, again, it's a pretty tough to get that. I mean, we, you know, with the wind behind us and, you know, a hundred things going right, but it, it is tough to get that. Okay, and, and the other big question post-election, presuming that you guys win, mm. um, which you may not, but Absolutely. let's see. Um, Labour, they're, they're definitely going to change their leader. Mm. Uh, who's your pick for... Um, I, I just think, and you go through them all, and it's perhaps the best of a bad bunch, but they'll go with Cunliffe. OK. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Yeah, I, and I just can't see them. I don't think the other choices when you well, actually... Well, you've spoken highly of, down. of Shane Jones. Um, yeah, I, I, I like him. I don't know if he is a long-term leadership option for them. Look, look, I think he'd give them a bounce, actually, in the polls. I think he would give them a bounce because he's got that character thing that people like. But do I, could I see him as a Prime Minister of New Zealand? My honest view is no. OK, and finally, your own electorate. I don't think there's anyone picking you to lose it, so it's a question of the majority. 11,700, I think you've mm. got in the last one. Mm. What's going to happen to it? Yeah, I see I predict has gone down a bit with Rena in terms of my yeah. majority. But look, you, you know, I, I work really hard. I mean, I've consciously made the last three years about my electorate. Some MPs very much focus on Wellington. For me, the folk have been Tauranga. I, I will be, you know, I will be doing everything I can to get the majority I've got and maybe more. Okay, thanks, Simon. Thank um, you. Thanks for coming along. Very good.